Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome again to our 15 minutes podcast on YouTube. Remember, we started this series of teaching on Monday. And this is the third series in the series. And uh, the topic is unbelief is an enemy. But I beg your indulgence to please subscribe to my YouTube channel in the sense that once the podcast is ready, the YouTube will send you a notification. And then once you open your phone, you will see the notification. Suppose your notification setting up setting is on. So you'll be able to follow this series and then you'll be able to build faith in Christ. So we continue from where we left off on Wednesday. Remember, I started by telling us that uh, unbelief is an event which I'm going to prove, which I'm trying to prove, and that unbelief cannot be preached away. And unbelief can stop a preacher from doing a mighty work in your life. And unbelief can stop a whole city from benefiting from a preacher's life. And unbelief can stop, and unbelief, I, unbelief also can stop a preacher from communicating to the people. Now, all this are what I'm, 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 I'm trying to prove. And I said to us that in Matthew, in, sorry, in, a, in, a, a, in Mark chapter 6, we already saw it, that the reason why Jesus Christ could not do mighty works is Jesus said it was the people's unbelief, not his own unbelief. And how did they get the unbelief? They got the unbelief when they went to do a background checkup on Jesus. So they know his family members, they mentioned all of them by name, but because probably something that they saw in the checkup did not meet their expectation, they became offended. It was so bad that they, they mentioned all the names of the people in Jesus' family by name, but they refused to call Jesus by the name Jesus. In fact, they say he, they call him a carpenter. And Jesus couldn't do any mighty works. And Jesus said it was because of the unbelief. So you see, the unbelief was built in their heart by the background checkup that they did themselves. So you see, unbelief is an event. It's an event. Now, we begin to see it also in the life of the, of the, of the disciples. The disciples couldn't get results. And in the case of Jesus, Jesus also couldn't get results. And Jesus said why he, Jesus, couldn't get result is because of the people's unbelief. They went to do the background checkup and something in the checkup was offensive to them and they became offended. But in the case of the disciples get, not getting result, Jesus didn't tell the disciples that it is because of the people's unbelief or the man's unbelief. Jesus told them that it's because of their own unbelief. And I said to us, this is where the apostles got it mixed up. And this is where any preacher also will get it mixed up. Now, we started reading from Mark chapter 9, from verse 14. It says, and when he came to his disciples, he came, so he was not there. He saw a great multitude about them, large crowd, large crowd. And the scribes questioning with them. The scribes were questioning with them. And straight away, all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed and running to him, saluted him. And he asked the scribes, What question are you with them? Why are you, why are you questioning my disciples? Why are you questioning my disciples? And verse 17 now says, And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my sons, which had a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foment, and he gnashed with his teeth, and pinned away, and I speak to the disciples that they should cast him out. And they could not. They could not. <laughs> they could not. Hallelujah. He said they could not. Why? Because they sat down into conversation with people who were anti Jesus' ministry. Now, you see, you can't sit down with people who are anti your pastor 
and expect them to build faith in your heart towards your pastor, it will work. It will work. If you sit down with people who don't flow with your pastor's ministry, if you flow with people who are anti your pastor, who you know that they are two backs of their hands put together like this against themselves with your pastor, if they are your best friend, you will never benefit from your pastor's ministry. You will never. Now that's what happened to the disciples. Now listen to me. The disciples had had results severally. Let me show that to you in the in the in the book of uh, 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 because the Bible says the disciples came and told Jesus and said demons are subject to us in your name. Let me let me let me let me show you that in the scriptures. They said Jesus. They said they, they told you. They said demons are subject to us in your name. So meaning that the disciples have had results before. So this is not their first time of trying to cast out devil. They have had results before. Look at it in, in in Luke 10 17 to 20, and the and the 17 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. So, so, so the disciples have had results. They have experienced results. Things has happened in their ministry. But why they failed in this particular place is because they accommodated people who are anti-Jesus. Look at the way Jesus Christ spoke to the disciple to the to the to the scribe when he came in, in, in mark 9 16 he said and he asked the and, and he asked the scribes what question are you with them why are you, why are you talking with my disciples now don't be angry if your pastor is trying to stop you from talking to some people in the church listen to me it's because you are important to him it's because he has the interest of your resort in his heart and those people are not getting results in their life. So they want to add you to their, to their, to their menu. So, that, so, so, so that's what happened to, those, so, so that's what happened to the disciples. The disciples sat down and they were talking with the disciples, uh, with the scribes and Pharisees who are anti-Jesus, who speak wrong things about Jesus. And listen to me. And by the time they spend their time talking with the people, with the scribes, unbelief has been built in their heart and they could not get the same result they've been getting. And Jesus said to them, the reason why you couldn't get results is because of your unbelief. It's because of your unbelief. Listen to me. Unbelief is an enemy. You've got to treat unbelief like an enemy. Now, when I use the word unbelief is an enemy, people who will keep you away from getting results are your enemy. But you see, you can't see man as your enemy. But see unbelief as your enemy. What they are communicating to you is an unbelief. Avoid them. Let me tell you. They may have the best job to give to you. They may have the best money to give to you. Avoid them. If they are your best friends, avoid them. And if you may not be able to avoid them and you have to sit down with them, the moment, you, the moment they want to they begin to discuss your pastor, say, please, if you discuss my pastor, I will leave your job. Or I will leave your business. Or I will leave whatever you are doing. Don't discuss my pastor. Can we just discuss this business and let me go my way? Because do you know what? By the time they are true with you, you will never produce results again in your life. And that's what happened to the disciples. Jesus Christ avoided people who are anti his ministry. Let me give you an example. And that's what the disciples are supposed to have done. The disciples are supposed to have avoided, they're supposed to have avoided the scribes. The moment the scribes came into that place, they should have just left the place for them. They should have just left the place for them. Jesus Christ knows that unbelief 
is an event and want an unbelief is created you can't preach it away and i will show you i will still show you how to do it now let me show you how jesus did it and why the disciples failed mark 5 35 to 43 while he yet spake there came from the ruler of the synagogues a certain which said they said thy daughter is dead why troublest thou the master the master any further as soon as jesus heard the word that was spoken he said unto the ruler of the of the church be not afraid only believe and he allowed no man to follow him said peter and james and john and brother of james and he cometh to the house of the ruler of the church and said the tumult and them that wept and wailed and, and wailed greatly and when he was come in he said unto them why make ye this ado and weep the damsel is not dead but sleepeth and they laughed him to scorn but when he had put them all out he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel and 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 them that were, were with him and enter in where the damsel was lying do you see that if i was here and they laughed at him to scorn but when he had put them all out when he had put them all out and he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her talita kume which is being interpreted damsel i said unto thee arise and straight away the damsel arose and walked for she was of the age of 12 years and they were astonished with a great astonishment and they charged them straightly that no man should know it and commanded that something should be given unto her. do you know what he commanded that no he, and straight away that no man should know it let me give you another good example you see, Jesus Christ did most of his work at Bethsaida. And, um, and unfortunately, you know, you know the devil now. Where you have an upper hand is where the devil will also go to attack the most. Because it's after your work. Now in Mark 11, 21, 24, the Bible said, Woe unto thee, Chorazin, woe unto thee, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works, mighty works, which were done in you, had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. Did you say, if the mighty work that was done, so mighty work was done in Bethsaida. Mighty work was done in Bethsaida. Mighty work. But look at this. My, Jesus Christ did most of his work in Bethsaida, and the devil attacked the people in that place. Because the devil knew that Jesus Christ was constantly in that place. So he went after the people. Now look at look at what happened in Mark 8, 22 to 26. And he and he cometh to Bethsaida, the same Bethsaida where mighty work was done, and they bring a blind man unto him and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. Can you relate the two together? And led him out of the town. Now that is the same town where mighty work has been done. But do you know what Jesus Christ led him out of that town? Why? Because the devil has gone to beat unbelief in the heart of that people because the people didn't really know who loved them and when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him he asked him if he saw off he asked him if he saw off and he looked up and said i see men as three walking uh -uh. the Bible said and he asked him if he saw all the answer is yes or no yes I see isn't it very simple but instead of the man to say yes i see the man said i see men as three walking jesus christ did not ask him to describe what he saw jesus christ only asked him if he saw and he said and i see men as three now blind men don't see men as three walking so if blind man begin to see it's because you're already seeing but because the man is coming from a zone that is already permitted, that is already concentrated with unbelief, even in his speech, it was an unbelief. After that, he put his hand again upon his eyes and made him look up, and he was restored and saw every man clearly. And he sent him away to his house, saying, Neither go into the town, nor tell it to any in the town. And Jesus went out and the disciples into the town of Caesarea Philippi. And by the way, he asked his disciples, saying unto them, Whom do men say that I am? Do you know what? I am out of time right now. So I will continue from here next week on Monday when I begin to show you that unbelief is an event. 
and you need to avoid it at all costs. God bless you. From here, I want to tell you that Jesus Christ is Lord. I will see you in our Monday podcast.